Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a whole new chapter, chapter three, section one, solving systems of equations. And first, we're going to start by graphing. So we're asked to solve this system of equations by graphing. Well, first, a system of equations is exactly this right here, where we're given two equations and we're asked to solve. Well, first, let's go ahead and graph each guy. And if we look over here, please remember that m, whatever is multiplied or divided to our x, is our slope. And whatever is added to it is our y-intercept. Well, here, what do we have? We have a slope of negative 1 because negative 1 is in front of the x. And we have a y-intercept of positive 4. So let's go ahead and graph this blue line right now. So my y-intercept, remember, we go up. 1, 2, 3, 4 on the y, put a dot. Now our slope, we go down one and over to the right one to create a negative slope. So each point I put, put I'm going down one over to the right one to create a slope. Or going back to the y-intercept, I go up one but to the left to create that same negative slope. So now let's go ahead and connect those dots with a line. So there is the graph of my blue line. Now, what is the slope of my red line? Well, my slope is negative 2 thirds because it's attached to x. My y-intercept now is 3. So I go up 3 on my y-intercept, put a point. Then I go down 2 over to the right, 3, because it's my run. And I'm creating a negative slope. And I go down 2 again from that point I just drew into the right 3 to create a negative slope. Or from your y-intercept, you could go up 2 because it's rise over run, and over to the left 3 to create that negative slope. So now let's go ahead and graph this line. So now we graph both of these lines. And what does that tell us? Well, where do they intersect? They intersect at this point right here. They intersect at point 3 one. Well, what does that tell us? Well, let's try it here for a sec. Let's put 3 and 1. This Remember, this is an x and a y back into our equation. Well, let's go ahead and do it. We go 1 equals, and then negative 3 plus 4, and so 1 equals 1. Does 1 equal 1? Yes, that is true. Well, how about here? We put 1 in for y, and then it's negative 2 thirds times 3 plus 3 we have 1 equals a negative 2 plus 3, and then it's 1 equals 1. That's true. Well, that's interesting that this point makes both of these equations true. And actually, this is the only point that you'll ever come up with an x and a y that will make both of these equations true. So then our answer for this problem was coordinate point 3, 1. Again, this is the answer. You're going to come up with answers like this for today, where it's an x and a y. Let's try another one. Looking at number two, here we have x plus five equals, or x plus y equals five, and four x minus two y equals eight. So starting with the blue equation, now you don't always have to find your slope and y-intercept. You can also find your x-intercept and your y-intercept. Well, to find your x-intercept, what do you have to do? You have to put in zero for y to find your x, and so here, x is 5. How would you find your y-intercept? You would just put 0 in for x. So 0 plus y equals 5, so y equals 5. Let's see if we can graph this line. Here, x is 5, so we go over on the x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up on the y, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go ahead and connect these dots. So now, here we have the line for the blue equation. Now let's see if we can do the same exact thing for the red equation. Now if you want to, you can go ahead and solve for y. That's fine. Or you can go ahead and find the x and y-intercept. So x-intercept. What do you do to find your x-intercept? You put 0 in for y. So it's going to be negative 2 times 0. And that equals 8. So it's 4x, and then it could be minus 0, but I'm just going to say equals 8. And here now, x equals 2. Well, how about for the y? Now I have 4 times 0, because I'm putting 0 in for x, minus 
2y equals 8, negative 2y equals 8, and then y equals a negative 4. So let's put, go ahead and put these two points on the line. So here it's 2 and y is negative 4. Go ahead and connect those dots with a line as best as you can. And so when we do that, we again have intersecting lines. And what does, what does this point tell us? This point is going to be the solution for this system of equations. And what is this point? That point is 3, 2. All right, so our answer is 3, 2. x is 3, y is 2. Let's try one more example. Here, with 3, we have 15x minus 6y equals 0 and 5x minus 2y equals 10. So now I'm going to get it into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to subtract the 15x over to the other side. So I have negative 6y equals negative 15x. Then I divide by negative 6, so y equals negative 15 divided by negative 6. And then now, can we simplify that at all? Let's simplify that to be a positive, because negative divided by negative, positive 5 halves x. My slope is 5 halves. My y-intercept, well, what's added or subtracted to it is 0. Let's try the red equation. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and graph this line here. y is 0. So now from this point, I go up 5 over to the right 2 because I'm creating a positive slope. Or I go down 5 and over to the left 2 because I'm creating a positive slope. I want a positive slope. So we go ahead and graph this line. It looks something like that. Now, for our red equation, I'm going to do the same exact thing. Subtract the 5x over to get negative 2y equals negative 5x plus 10. I'm dividing by that negative 2 because I want to get y all by itself. So y equals now a negative 5 over a negative 2, and that's x. And that's also minus, I'm dividing this 10 by a negative 2, so it's minus 5. Simplifying, I get y equals 5 halves x minus 5. My slope is 5 halves. My y-intercept is negative 5. So let's try and graph this line. Here's negative 5. Now I go up 5 over 2 to make a positive slope, up 5 to the right 2 to make a positive slope. We draw the line to connect the dots. Now, do our lines intersect? Do these red and blue lines intersect? Will they ever intersect if it continues up here and continues up there or continues off the screen and off the screen? No. Well, that's interesting. So, if they do not have an intersection, do you think they have a solution? So now this guy, since there is no point, has no solution. Now, what else can we have? Well, now, can we name the number of solutions? Here, we have two parallel lines. How many solutions do we have? Zero. Here, we have intersecting lines that intersect just once. How many solutions do we have? One. Well, what about the same line? These are exactly the same line. Can you see the red behind the blue line? And since if they have the same line, then we have an infinite infinite amount of solutions. And now let's jump into some vocab here. Now we have consistent. A consistent line has at least one solution. An inconsistent line has no solutions. An independent line has exactly one. And a dependent has an infinite number of solutions. Well, what lines or what graphs are consistent here? Well, it has at least one solution. Well, which one has one solution? This graph does. Does another one have at least one solution? Well, an infinite number of solutions is, has at least one solution. So both of these graphs are consistent while the parallel lines are inconsistent. And then, how about independent? Exactly one solution? Which one has exactly one? 
It's this graph with one solution that has a pair of intersecting lines and then an infinite number of solutions is also dependent. And that does it for chapter 3, section 1, graphing systems of equations by graphing. Good day.